Hey, I always do that shit. It's very, very weird and awkward when I first come home. But hey, how y'all doing, y'all? It's Shay Harris. And we are now rocking with In the Shay Shack with Francis and Sumo. Woo. Oh, there's sound effects. I love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so first of all, I want to say, you know, when I, when, when I first, um, book this particular session um i initially asked francis you know um yeah. and i asked francis based on so what i'm trying to do here is i want to i want to create one a safe space for me like for me specifically it's, it's not for anybody else it's for me mm -hmm. um for me to um uh share my thoughts you know what i'm saying share my opinions also to get to know uh people you know what I'm saying? But I want to get to know people outside of the space that is work. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because I feel like when we show up to work, a lot of times, sometimes we uh, we put on these faces or we feel like we have to play a certain game in order to work. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And um, personally, that's just not the way I want to live my life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, yes, we have to be professional, but professional should be just something that I am and not something yeah. that I do because of the people mm -hmm. or the places that I that I am in or around. So I feel you, I feel you, I feel you. Hell yeah, hell yeah. So um first of all I wanna say welcome. Hell yeah. Ooh. Thank you for coming. Bienvenue. Bienvenidos. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, thank you, Francis. Man, we here. We're and here. yeah, um I really, you know, I ain't gonna lie. This is my second time doing this. I really don't know. <laughs> Man, How was the first one? That did real quick. The first Take time? Take an inhale, exhale. You know what I'm saying? One, two, three, gone. You want to try to do it again? Yep. All right, good. again, one more time. Inhale. Hold it. Think about your intentions and then release. Yeah. I see. Thank you. God. Yeah, I can always appreciate it. Oh, God. You gotta breathe every okay. time. Okay, y'all. Y'all just make sure y'all comfortable. We probably supposed to do this off screen. Make sure you're comfortable because I'm trying to get comfortable too. You said off screen. Yeah, man. Everything off screen. For real. <laughs> For real. I'm going to do a, I'm gonna do a, um, a BTS hey, of some hey. sort. Nice. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I, so initially, so last week we had Dre. Dre hey, the Sensei. Turn up. And we talked about he has a project dropping September the 29th. Mm -hmm. And um, so we talked about that. So my next thought was, who else could I bring? Like, so initially, like the thing that I was thinking was, like, who has something going on? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That 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 people would want to talk about because with everything I do, even before I started podcasting, um, the point was to help people connect. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And the point was like, listen, I know how hard it is to get things done to, you know, so if you're a music artist, to shoot a music video, the price behind shooting music videos, the price behind going to the studio. And if I can help you get that done, then I want to help you get that done because I know what it feels like to not have any help. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um. Bridging the gap. Yeah. Okay. Bridging the gap in a completely different way than how I started and how I intended to work. So, um, yeah. So, so I just want to, so we're going to start off by talking about Hey, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> we start out with talking about uh, two Francis and Sumo about what y'all do. Okay. Now every Monday and what Thursday? Yes, yeah. sir. So we didn't we didn't wrap it up. Yeah, yeah, we getting blessed out here. So yeah. what? How I sell it to people? Like my commercial, my tagline. I be like, bro, pull up on us. We be chilling, healing, candles lit, talking yeah. shit. Relax to the max. Yes, yeah, sir. Folks be like, oh. What? I like how that sounds. <laughs> you know what I'm well, before so. you get started and talk about that, though, introduce yourself and talk about you and mm -hmm. who you are. You know Say what I'm saying? Less. Who are you? I am Francis Kama, the Truman, asking how you doing, if y'all feeling good today. Say yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I am a poet. And you host. know it. Come on now. <laughs> um, spoken word artist, poet. 
uh, really just entertainer, all around entertainer, because I be rapping, I be singing. I be dancing, I got a little strip. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got a little secret strip career. Yeah, um, you in the a back. Secret strip career. Yeah, cause you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we exposing that one. <laughs> nah, you just said it. It's too late. Um, NDAs. Nah, for real though. Like you, you can know, but you're not gonna know unless you know. Yeah, you know I'm saying. Uh, and then I sell clothes as well. I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know everything. Don't hide. Uh, we Don't underground. We underground with it. Okay. Um, I sell clothes. I'm a stylist as well. Um, mm-hmm. Visual artist. Got started with that a long time ago. Really feel like I tapped into that in high school. Taking AP art. Got to college and tapped into the graphic design bag. And so the culmination of all these things have just kind of been the engine to allow me to do what I do. Like if I'm doing an event. I don't got to pay nobody to make the flyer because I'm making the flyer. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, I, people have have dubbed it like, oh, he's a renaissance man. Yeah. So. And what does that mean, a renaissance man? A little, little bit of everything. You know what I'm saying? Like like on some Janet Jackson, Donald Glover, Nick Cannon type vibe. Like all these people can either act, sing, dance, Write shows, produce, produce yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, hell, even Erica Badu, she DJ and produce, like, you know, bust around. Like, a lot of yeah. these people, even Duke Deuce, like, bro, be producing his own tracks, you know what I'm saying? Right. So it's just kind of like, you know, that's my definition of like a Renaissance person. Like, you kind of, you, you get the language of, of art. And so, like you, nigga, what the yeah. fuck? Like, good plan, bro. Good plan. Yeah. No, yeah. but so, you know, for people who never heard that term, right? True. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we can understand you and what you're talking about. Yeah. And then we have Sumo. You introduce yourself. Tell us about Hello. you. Hello, I am Sumo, the artist, um, all around artist. If you think art, I can probably do it in any realm. Honestly, paint is my main medium. Um, I use color to translate everything, so that'd be my, my everyday focus, using color to communicate, high key. Okay. Yep. Turn up. Okay, and together, together you all host? The 901 Poetry Open Mic every Monday at Hot Tom Cafe, yep. and now every Thursday at Clover Club, sending love and hugs. Now we downtown with it. Yeah. Uh, so we got the Midtown vibe. <laughs> Shout out to Midtown And now we got downtown no no cap, no cap. Yeah, I just had to hit that button run time I'm That's good. fine I'm good But yeah okay so Together y'all host Perform 901 on Poetry Night Memphis Night Poetry Night um, mm-hmm. at, On Mondays J Mitch on keys J Mitch on yeah, the keys Taylor on the light board Come on now Putting the skill and feel We got pieces uh, yeah. on the boards You know keeping mm-hmm. score Sorry. And how did that um how did that come about? Like, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It's it's really been like just a what they call it. I was gonna say effect. yeah, I was gonna say transitions. Yeah. Like literally transitions. Um, Cause it started with Stephen Fox. Uh he was in New York and then he moved back to the M like twenty 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 one. Yeah. Twenty twenty. And so um <laughs> Ted, <laughs> y'all gotta come on Mondays. We have regulars. <laughs> yeah, come on Mondays. <laughs> 2020. Um, my bad. Yeah, so that as my mentor, I met him in high school doing this poetry mentorship program with Hattie Lou, and so he came back to the city from New York doing his thing. And he's Stephen just has like good relationships with people, like, mm-hmm. and so the owner at High Tone was like, hey. If you want to kick off something on Mondays, go ahead. And so I seen him post a flyer. I'm like, nigga, open mic, and you didn't even text me, bro. You supposed to be my mentor. Right. And so <laughs> Mondays was always my off day. I'm like, perfect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm going to pull up. And I get there, man, like, he was running everything. I'm like, who? who's on the ox, bro? Renaissance, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like I'm like, bro, who on the ox? He like, shit, you, <laughs> if you want to. So I just started playing songs like in between each poet that would go up and then 
me being me, I love candles. Yeah. I'm like, shit, Walgreens got these $1 candles, spent $15, you know what I'm saying? I just started setting candles out. And, yeah. like, slowly but surely, people just started fucking with the vibe. Mm-hmm. And then my brother, Jay Mitch, um, this man, another Renaissance man, like, bro, he played <laughs> drums, keys, he produced as well, coding, web, like, bro. Photography. Bro, I can just keep going. <laughs> Um, and so he, he hit me up like, y'all still doing the poetry shit? I'm like, yeah. He like, shit, you don't mind if I pull up and play some keys? <laughs> like, I'm trying to get some practice in type shit. And so he started pulling up, and then folks was, like, asking for him, requesting him, like, yeah. hey, can the keys, like, can, can the piano player play for me? Mm-hmm. And so after a little bit, Steve Fox kind of peeped what was happening. He was like, actually... I want you to host the show. Because he was, like, doing, like, the stage, talking. I was in the back, in the cut, playing music. Like, you couldn't even see me type shit. Right. He was like, bro, I want you to host. I'm like, ugh. That's, <laughs> that's a lot of stage time. That's yeah. a lot of stage time. And um, I remember he took, like, a month off because COVID was going crazy and he just had to lay low. He was like, bro, find you a co-host. Like, I'm like, bro, I don't got to find at all. She right here. Mm, that's so like, funny. Like, oh, so it just came together. Yeah. Like, I literally remember the day he called me. Yeah. <laughs> so Sumo was the co host that you was talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Literally. Just knew right then. Yeah, because we've we been trapping, bro, like, yeah. since 2019. Like, I remember coming to the open mic way before I was the co-host. Yeah. Right. Like, there was no stage design. There was no, like, it was so genuine, like, before anything started accumulating as it is now mm-hmm. and it was it was the same vibe yeah. okay yeah. genuine you get up there oh was jay mitch there when i was there i don't think jay was there fool. you was so you or was maybe there like before. the night i was there mm-hmm. he wasn't there or you was there before jay mitch started playing on the keys um probably not but maybe that monday that i remember going he wasn't there okay, okay. i remember mm-hmm. what i had on and everything okay yeah. Type shit. Mm-hmm. um and so things have just kind of organically continued to like grow, you know what I'm saying? And I really appreciate Sumo being my co host because niggas need balance, bro. Like, right. as far as it goes for like masculine, Thanks. feminine energy, like, we can't have a sausage fest. Right. Like, like you can't be scaring the hoes. Yeah. Can't be scaring the hoes with too many can't niggas. Can't be scaring the hoes. Hey, listen, yeah. y'all. Hey, listen. Listen. <laughs> 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 I I, I I love I love poetry night. I might not show up every every Monday, but I love it. Right. One of the reasons why I love it is the hoes is there. Hey. I, I literally uh, thought you were gonna say I love the hoes. <laughs> <laughs> not to call them hoes. Throw my hands up nah, in there. Not to but, call them hoes, but it's be it, it's always some beautiful women in the Monday, building. Hey, on, on a Monday. On a Monday. Put little shit on here. Mm-hmm. 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 They sweat. Mm-hmm. Putting that shit on. Oh, me. You know and then wonder. spitting some sexy ass poetry, and then you be like, "Damn, Damn. nigga, I, words with how you like looking a certain know. way." <laughs> <laughs> like I ain't even know I had no the clue. power of dialect. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. Cause then, you know, um, you know, like when you meet people. Of course, when you meet people, just off seeing them face value, you get a certain whatever you get from them. Mm-hmm. And then when they open their mouth and start talking, it'll take you in a whole different yeah, direction. Yeah, that's true. It'll yeah. bang you to the left real quick. Yeah, yeah. And then the team uh, grew with the addition of Taylor B and then Papa Drew. Yeah. Um, because Jay Mitch was on keys. Papa Drew working with you, working yeah. with me, like, mm-hmm. he would just be pulling up, helping out. It's like, bro, you might as well get a cut of this pot, too. Yeah. And so, Jay Moose would be on keys, Drew would be on trumpet, and um, I transitioned away from working the soundboard, because, like, you feel me? You can't be doing everything. Yeah, right. Um, so, Beezus peep game on the board, and now she does, like, the lighting and shit, yeah. which adds another, like, layer of mm-hmm. just like production value you know what i'm saying like imagine you get done doing your poem and then the lights fade down right like you at the apollo you feel me <laughs> in oh. memphis <laughs> so it's, it's it's turned into like a very beautiful simple like mm-hmm. it's so simple but everybody just it's so consistent doing their thing yeah um and so now because of this organic growth we've been able to like do open mic here at, at Cossett 
Um, we doing open mic poetry in the park this coming up weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, Memphis Parks. We we'll be able up. to do it for free. You know what I'm saying? We'll just provide this for the community. Like that shit. Top two. Are you only doing it? Are you only doing the uh, the one in the park once? Is it gonna be repetitive? This is definitely gonna That's happen. That's the again. plan. Yeah, yeah we're okay. just gonna say mm-hmm. it, just speak it out. Um, yeah, because they need to see us do it. Right, and then right. they're gonna be like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, yeah. and there's yeah. so many communities that need that because they're not coming to Hot Town. You know what I'm saying? It's right. folks that live somewhere they don't know what's going on. So, right, all right, makes sense. Mm-hmm. For sure, makes sense. So that's that's where we at now. We like to do yeah. theme shows like for Valentine's. We did pajama poetry. Yep. Poems best read in bed. Yes, I was just gonna say <laughs> my first show was on Valentine's Day. What you mean your first show? That I ever hosted. Oh, okay. When I made the flyer. Oh. Yes, oh. that was the first time Damn. I ever hosted. Damn. So that's like my anniversary. Cause I was gonna say how Rudy like. Uh, we are, you know, the people that are a part of the core of Open Mic, and it's all rooted in love. Yeah. yeah. And that yeah. was the first time I did that on that day, so it's definitely held out. It hasn't switched up, I and would say. I, and I just was wondering, like, how long did it take f- for you to, like, so this this team was grown organically, from what I'm hearing. Yeah. How long did it take for that to develop? Well, we, we two years in now. Two mm-hmm. years. We had our anniversary, our one-year anniversary last year on Seven Eleven, and then we ain't doing this year because we was transitioning yeah, through stuff. Yeah, Something niggas, was going we on. We just had a lot going on. Yeah, and like we, when it come to like feature special shows, like we not just microwavable. Yeah, like, we curate the fuck like out of some shit. Like that shit like four week, four to eight weeks out at least. Like, and we really lineup. talking about it months in advance before facts. we start dishing out stuff facts, too. So facts, yeah. Facts. Cause it matters, bro. Like we dealing with people, time, energy, mm-hmm. and money. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta get and people. quality. We gotta produce quality stuff. All right. All right. All right. So I just want to say, one, uh, both of you all. What's uh one of your favorite moments that you've had with? What should I call it? Perform nine hundred one. What should I call it? Perform nine hundred one is like the, the website, like right. choose nine hundred one type mm-hmm. shit, and then. What we do, like the actual stage, is like the 901 mm-hmm. poetry open mic, like how Fat okay. Mac got the early. Well, no, nah, nah, that's a throwback. I was uh, just reading about that today. Not the early show. <laughs> we got um, the open mic, you know what I'm saying, yeah. on Wednesdays. Um, yeah. So, like, that's like the name, like 901 poetry open mic. Only because you brought up Fat Mac. I guess my favorite thing would be how, like, we Damn. are reinventing a renaissance that's. Not even reinventing. We just kind of adding our own quality because mm-hmm. we're not reinventing nothing. No, I definitely. Uh, this, this is kind of off topic, but I definitely feel like Memphis. Like you know, we had the Harlem Renaissance when everybody mm-hmm. up north, all the black people was moving up north and then doing the art. And mm-hmm. I definitely feel like it's that thing happening. I don't want to say for the complete south, but definitely in the mid south. So Memphis mm-hmm. and our collective areas, like it's it's plenty of people um, getting into. Or trying to find themselves through art, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Whether they yeah. paint, rap, uh, whether they throw on parties right. or right. you know, however they choosing to be in the entertainment business. Yeah. They let these niggas find themselves. Yeah. I mean, and it's hard to do that <laughs> for real, like, especially when um, like if you're personally concerned with people respecting the art, you know mm. what I'm saying? It's, it be it's like I'm speaking from my own personal, right. yeah. you right. know, um, I'm a hip hop head. And for me, the difference between hip hop and rap is that hip hop is based out of a truth. You know what I'm saying? Whereas rapping may be fictional. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And yeah. so, um, you know, it's trying to get people to show the respect to the different arts and the different things right. that, the different nuances of things, because a lot of times we do things that are like very close to each other. But, mm-hmm. but even though it's just it's like, you know, minor, minor differences, but they're not the same thing. And we need to respect them as. You know right. what I'm saying? So Different genre. entities. Individual, yeah. Yeah. I forgot why I was saying that. I tend to do that a lot, which is why I brought my backpack. <laughs> all makes sense. No, nah, we here, we here to Because <laughs> you was asking us what's like our favorite oh, yeah. part of yes. open mic, I guess. So did you get to answer that question? What, what was it like? What was my favorite moment? Uh, yeah, your shit? favorite moment. like um. Mm, definitely. Pajama poetry was, was a vibe. <laughs> But I really enjoy it for the homies, bro. Mm-hmm. Like we we did this collab event with um our Nashville home, yeah. Creative, yes. Uh, a- Anthony Williams, and that man, Shout out. another <laughs> Renaissance man. Yeah. We uh, like all met at MT, and um, if you ever heard of Bernie Amsterdam, if you ask me, he probably like 
top three producers in the M. Mm -hmm. um, and okay. so for the homies was this mix of poetry, beats, and just chill vibes. Like like the whole setup was like lo-fi. What you do with your friends, yep. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so it was a poetry set. Oh, and film. That's what it Facts. was. Film beats poetry. Mm -hmm. And so Taylor and B. And vendors, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that moment was really special because I was Taylor B's first film screening. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Bernie's first live beat set in Memphis. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And um, I've never seen Afro Sheen mm -hmm. mix live. I think this might have been her first time in the M2, though. Dang. Um, and she had just... Uh, Open for Jill Scott that week. Yeah, you know I'm saying crazy. Yeah. Afro Sheen. Yeah, mm -hmm. DJ Afro Sheen. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got Tilla. Shout Tilla. out, mm -hmm. no, Shorty, Nashville. Uh, yeah, Shorty. They plug in hella people. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Get connected, please. And, and there's literally like a connect happening. Like DJ Nico is mm -hmm. DJing with her at an event in Damn, the middle. Like it's coming a weekend, so it's like definitely like you said, like the, it's, yeah, happening. it's happening. It's happening. Yeah. It's happening. That intersection. <laughs> Make sure y'all clap when y'all hear this at the house. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, so for the happened. homies was definitely we be doing a lot of a lot of cause we had a Kwanzaa joint that joint went live. No, it was smoking gas in the home. You know what I'm saying? Damn, it's my favorite yeah. moment. Pajama poetry was sexy though because we had to chase on stage. Alon oh, oh my God, I forgot. Alondas had me smacking her ass. Oh, oh with yeah. the little whip, yeah. Was I there that night? I feel like I remember seeing this. We all had no pajamas. Oh, yeah, I definitely was there. Yeah. Was there I didn't have no pajamas on, but I was there. Thanks. You was in the front one. Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. We on was the smoking there in the whole tune. Yeah, yeah, we were. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, right I really can't rank them, though. Like, That's what I'm trying to think. If I could, like, say this one on top of this one. Like, oh, yeah. I don't you know. have a moment that sticks out to you the most or something that touched your heart, something amazing? Okay, so, like, recently we had a somebody that is from France uh, come to the open mic. His name yeah. Joseph. And for me, that was monumental because it's like we know who we are and what we do because we do it. Like, we, we respect ourselves, so right. we're able to show up every week because we know the value of what we do. But to have somebody from out the country, bro. Mm -hmm. It man literally popped in like a random person and was doing poetry in French. That probably just took me. Because it's like, we international now. Like, can't nobody yes, say we not? Definitely. Can't nobody yes, say that. Sir. Like, <laughs> we really international. Like, and just to know, something I've been like taking value of is how much Memphis matters to other people that don't live here. Okay. Right. So the fact that he, he was geeked about taking Memphis back to France. Bro. Right. Like, that means way more to me to know that his one experience could, somebody in France could want us to come over there now. Right. Because he's going to go tell them. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. That, that was oh, it for sure. me. Yeah. And then I got to make music with him as well. So, that was top tier. How did how did they go? The session? Yeah. Crazy. His energy is crazy. Like, he had so much energy for He was excited about everything. Bro was rapping. I mean, even yeah. on stage, he was like, eh, yeah. yeah like, he was, bro, he was turning it. up like oh, niggas me. in the crowd. And he learned how to say Jay Mish name. Jay Mish. <laughs> it was so cool. Yeah. It was fine. Yeah, like, I, I, I'm tempted to put, I wish some, somebody got a video done it when he said, fuck you, man. He just busted. Ooh, it. yeah. Who was in the parking lot? I think Zinni got it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I want to put that in the video. I know he got that, John. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, I guess well, so I got to get his permission first, huh? Who? Joseph? Yeah, Joseph. He won't mind. Okay. Yep. Yeah. High key. <laughs> I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah, man. What's your favorite moment? Yeah, I'll show. Like, we got to reciprocate these questions. You've been a lot of times. My favorite moment? It's so, like, okay, so, I be excited. Okay. Okay? Especially when a young lady hops on the stage. <laughs> She do a sexy, she do a sexy poem. Mm -hmm. And then it's like you see a side of, for me, I can't oh speak God. for nobody else, but you see a side of people that you don't, well, I don't be expecting to see. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, it's kind of like people, okay, I hate to, mm, it's like people start breathing fire. You know what I'm saying? But they're not mm -hmm. literally breathing fire. It's like kind of what I see. Because mm -hmm. you got to tap into a certain I did that Thursday. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I it's kind of like what I see with a couple of people when they hop on stage. Yeah. Also, um, I, like, what do I want to say? 
Um, I like poetry, right? I'm a, I'm a songwriter. I write songs, and I write songs typically, and I'm typically rapping when I write songs. I do sing a little bit, but not much. Mm -hmm. So the fact that poetry is so closely tied to rapping is what catches my attention most of the time. But it's the it's the small nuances that the, how people do wordplay, the things that right. be saying, the um the different deliveries of um, cadence. Poems. Yeah, I you know love what I'm saying. It. I pay I. I and so, like, th the people who stick out the most to me, um, okay, man, I wish I wasn't so afraid to say what I want to say. Why are you? You said this is uh, This place. is, exactly, this is where I come to do this, but it's still a, it's still a. You working it? Yeah, working. Mm, it's sure. a working thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because this is uh, number two. Right. So, ooh, I was going to get off topic. Next week, I plan on being here by myself nice. and just, and just spitting whatever come to mind. Um, but. Oh, what was we talking about? The person on stage, whoever, the moment you talk about writers, you being oh, a songwriter. Some of the yeah, people, yeah. some of the the things that I like about poetry the most is some of the people who I feel like this is my personal opinion have the best poetry may not deliver the best sometimes. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So like you have a That's a, a very special way of delivering your 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 poetry. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And just some people, think about some people just be talking. Right, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they saying what they gotta say, and it still hits you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. As impactfully as your poetry, right, is, right, you know what right. I'm Even though it may lack the the poetic sway, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying when you listening. Um, my favorite moments for me though is probably miracle. Yeah, Facts. I was waiting. On yep. you. <laughs> I just felt it. Yeah, it's probably miracle. Um, every time, you know, I got her on a song. I'm sure, like, you got her on the junt, though. Yep, I got her on a reciprocate Crazy. remix. And, um, like, for me, so we got in the studio one time. This was after the, this was after the, uh, after we dropped together. Okay. She was dropping with somebody else. And um, she was talking about, I don't know if I should rap or do poetry. And I'm just like, man. First, I'm like, do what come natural to you. But also, I'm like, man, I want to hear that poet, that poetry on. You know what I'm saying on on a beat because there's plenty of times when rappers get up on the mic at poetry night mm -hmm. and say this is a poem knowing they wrote it as a rap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying and just spit it and keep on going and then act like nothing happened. Well, you can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You can do the exact same thing and and keep the poetic flow. Like we know this is this is poetry. This yeah. is not it's spoken. You know yeah. what I'm saying. This is not rap. Yeah, but it's you know poetry. something I've noticed is actually very hard for a lot of people to learn how to turn it off. Yeah, which what? It's right. like a rapper yeah. like to turn the off beat. the flow that they used to and like slow down. It's very hard. I literally watch people struggle on stage. Yeah, me too. I key yeah. This one. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I think a lot. I think a lot about everything that I do. So when I if I, if I get on stage because I I don't really like to get on stage at nine one one. Uh, 901 poetry open mic but i don't like to get on stage because i want to respect the space you know what i'm saying because because hip-hop and poetry is so close i don't really want to be up there doing rap i want to if this if i'm gonna be here i'm gonna pack, practice poetry here mm -hmm. you know, okay because i do write poetry when i feel like it yeah so why so not do you see the two as separate things um yeah i do see them as separate things they are closely related mm -hmm. but i do see them as separate things but more like two different sides of the same coin you know what I'm saying? Mm, that's cool so have you have you experienced like within yourself not being able to tell the difference like have you heard an artist do something and be like damn is this poetry is this mm -hmm. rap is it both like because uh, that shit it, it happens you it know do be saying? that fine line i don't think i don't think that i have experienced it personally mm. but i have had people like I play a particular song and they like that's poetry, mm. and um and I'm kind of like sitting there like, what made you say that? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like that's kind of like my thought process. Um, but when I'm when I'm if I if I do try to get on stage and I try to do something that I wrote as a rap as a poem, mm -hmm. usually so usually I get on stage and I perform it like it was. A rap song and then when i get off stage i'm thinking about how i could have made it more poetic you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying how i could have slowed down how i could have put pauses in certain places yeah. that would have made it mm -hmm. different than me rapping it you know yeah. what i'm saying so like would you go practice that or I do you should. just think about it god damn i should 
I was just wondering. I should practice it. I mean, so like, remember though, like, our space is really practice, a practice stage. Yeah. Like, niggas be, I be rehearsing. You know what right. I'm saying? Oh, like, like, on some, how, how does this sound project it, amplify, or like, how does this feel speaking into a mic? Because at the crib, I just be. Right. But like on stage, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) You got like a crowd in front of you. That's part of like performing, like connecting Mm -hmm. with your audience or like having a microphone like stationary or in your hand. So it's like, you know, it's like I say just just look at it like like a rehearsal or a rehearsal hall. Yeah, yeah. My I personally would love to see you do more because you say you be not doing it. And I'm like. I would love to hear I you more. I definitely be not doing it. You should do it. You could, you write. I think you're a good writer too. So, thank you. For sure. I appreciate that. Definitely. I definitely do. You're a good storyteller. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Definitely. Even if you went up there and read Man. your lyrics like no cadence, like read it like a story or some shit. Hard. I like, mm-hmm. bro. You could do your uh, say yes joint. That hoe so hard to Ooh. me for. And then me in the bad back. And the B she got the cadence. Yeah. Like, bro, like Jay Mitch got you on like cause cause that's another thing too. Like if you let Jay Mitch lead, mm-hmm. sometimes you gotta catch his vibe. Right. Mm-hmm. And like and it's uncomfortable. Like sometimes I'll do a piece and I'm like, I'm not trying to do it like that. But like But he also not gonna stop. Yeah, like so it's kinda <laughs> like you just gotta kinda adjust, mm-hmm. be uncomfortable with it and just let it be and be like, okay. Cause another thing about Jay, he tapped in enough to know you might be uncomfortable and he might try to help you out while he's still doing his thing and mm-hmm. try to flow with you too. So yeah. For sure. Heck yeah. Super helpful. So if you ain't heard nothing else, I definitely I heard come on out and practice. You feel me? Okay. If you ain't heard nothing else. And then when you feel like you got it, come be sexy on a Thursday. Because we got two nights a week. Hey. So Monday yeah. could be the practice stage and Thursday you could run you that shit. Yeah. Hey, and listen, listen. Thursday nights, Clover Club, right? Yes. At the Clover yes. Club. Club. Sexy. You know what I'm saying? Love Jones. Sexy. In the basement. The venue is sexy. You heard her. The people already be sexy, but when, so when you come, just expect you know. Grown and sexy. Grown and sexy. This That's is all it is. is. Grown and sexy for real. <laughs> you can take all your all your women there, <laughs> and, your, and your male friends too. Man, you hear me? All of them. And they gonna enjoy themselves. They are gonna have too yeah. much fun. And the food's straight too, though. Like mm-hmm. like folks was smacking. Like, oh, for real. And yep. I like that both menus, we got different options. Mm-hmm. Like, we ain't going down there and they got the same shit. What you got at the first menu? You know? The first menu we got, it's like bar food. Yeah. The bar food don't, it ain't nasty. I ain't going to say it's nasty. No, it's not nasty. And they yeah. be fucking with us the on the vegan specials, mm-hmm. too, though. Like, I don't know if they do that any other day, but on Mondays, That's they facts. be having, like, bro, she be, she be, Busting. bro. Salad bro. soup, this. All of that. And we talking about Mondays at Hot Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cleveland. Yep. The mm-hmm. vegan special, so we got something for everybody that's involved. Right, mm-hmm. You know, right. vegetarians, right. vegans, right, carnivores, <laughs> yep, <laughs> drinkers. Nah, you hear me? You might get tipsy, maybe they be heavy handed and Man. blessing you with that. Get you a special. Oh, me. Mm-hmm. Get you a special to come bless the mic. Yes. We outside, we outside. We outside. Hey. Man, so I, I'm a. Uh, so I'm gonna open this up for the rest of the time. I'm gonna open this up. If you got anything you want to speak on, anything you want to sure. talk about, you just want to chop it up. Uh, this is the time to do it. Ooh. You you know yeah, I was gonna talk about yesterday. I just had um, a gallery, mini gallery, open in my studio, and I think it's cool. I'm sitting here with you because you was there when I first got there, Jack. Yeah. Like I found the pictures and everything. Uh, so I kind of had a full circle last day yesterday. Okay. It was amazing. Elaborate. Um, what? I'm about to transition out of the studio. Okay. So it was a big deal to put up a gallery, like a farewell for myself. Mm-hmm. So it was is amazing. It, is the gallery closed? Are you on? Uh, it's open until the 29th, till Friday. To the 29th? Mm-hmm. And then what time? Uh, I'm there every day this week. Literally all day. Okay. Hockey, yeah. They need to hit you up before they come? Or yeah, you can uh, just follow me on Instagram. This is intentional. Um, the address is on everything I'm posting, so you really can just pull up. I'll be there chilling, but you can just hit yeah. me up either way. Yeah, but probably once this posted, she probably be gone once this posted. Damn, that's true. But 
Steven. Shout out to everybody that came through. You hear me? I love y'all. <laughs> love, love, love. And shout out to you. Hey, thank for you. being there from the beginning. Hey, I was Hakeem. gonna come through yesterday. I had forgot. I ain't, I ain't even gonna no lie issue. to you. I um was running around doing Instacart. I do Instacart to make all my money. And um, you got me on that shit. I literally want a car again so that <laughs> I can get back to that because I really enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, it's cool. You know, no, I ain't got no boss. And nobody tell me right. when to clock in, when to right. get up, when to right. wake up. But yeah. you also know that with, without having a boss. You need to be your on your ass. Yeah. System, <laughs> you need to be on your own ass. You don't no nobody can't nobody tell you when to wake up. I get up at today. I was up at four this morning. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Getting ready for the day, stretch, you know, shower, shit, shower, shave, all that mm-hmm. shit. And um, I might meditate. Some, I ain't meditate this morning, but um, just just staying on my shit. So I get up four in the morning, do my do my pre work. Routine, it's not mm-hmm. really a routine. I don't really have you a real routine. Yeah. Time. You know Get what I'm right saying? Right, Thanks. six o'clock come, six a.m. come. I'm on Instacart. I'm I'm up in in grocery store. Yeah. You know That's what I'm saying? And I do that from like six to ten, and I might I might hop back on from five to nine. But like, you know what I'm saying? The rest of the day in between there. I get to do whatever I want to do mm-hmm. for the most part, which is how I make time for stuff like this, like mm-hmm. and like being here. So, like, uh, so. The last couple of days, I thought a lot. I've been thinking a lot about this podcast and how I want to go about the podcast in general. You know what I'm saying? So, because initially, I wanted to just like be natural conversation. Like, the thought process is my thought process is. Hey man, I run into people all the time, and I, you know, I first of all, I love talking to people. Period. Mm-hmm. But I run into people all the time, and I just be asking questions, and I'm just being curious about what the fuck they got going on in mm-hmm. their life. Really, I feel like I be being nosy and just being in people's business, really, because I be yeah. like, let me be in your business for a second. Yeah. I'm going to sit down in my chair like this right now. Well, what you got going on? Mm-hmm. Call it social studies. You yeah, just <laughs> taking okay. notes, making observations. What you, you know said, what social studies. Because then I'm thinking, how many, like, it might, you might be the only person that actually check in on a nigga that day. Uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And so I wanted this I wanted to things to be, you know, like very natural, like informative. Yeah. Informative. Is that the word I'm looking for? Informal. Mm. I wanted to I be see. Yeah, I wanted mm-hmm. to be very informal. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? We just chilling. We yeah. just but at the same time, so like we go back to this thing about, you know, going who you are when you're at work. It's a very thin line that we have to like work at teetering on you know yeah, what i'm saying that balance uh how do you balance that how do i ba- oh shit <laughs> you working on it? yeah i'm working on it so what i so what i really feel like is that i live on the um on the spectrum of what most people would consider not to be professional at all right mm-hmm. but also um that's just me for me that's just me being myself right, you know what right, i'm saying yeah, yeah. so it's like where is the balance? So, so for me personally, I know I've all as long as I've heard of code switching and known what code switching was, I've always been like I shouldn't have to code switch right. mm-hmm. in order to get certain things done. Like I shouldn't have to change the way I speak right. in order for you to understand me. Because the truth is, we both speak in plain English. That's how I felt at the time. And then I go to college, went to MTSU, and then I went to U of M. And U of M is where I learned this lesson. Just because we speak in English don't mean we speak in the same language. You know right. what I'm saying? So, yeah. depending on who you are, we can say the same thing and mean two completely different things. Right. It's, it's everybody. You know what I'm saying? So, so, right now, right now where I am is I am trying to find spaces that allow me to be myself, but also allow growth. So, mm. so um, a space that, all right, here you could be yourself, but when they see some, some shit that's not right or something you could work on, then you point it out and you let me know, mm, hey, maybe you want to. That don't mean I'm going to be receptive to it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it's always but it's there, good to yeah. have it. Yeah, yeah. Once a, a lot of the times, whenever I think about anything my mama has or has not told me, I be like, damn. When I get into some shit, I be like, damn, she told me that. Or, mm-hmm. or the answer is, damn, why ain't nobody tell me that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? One of the two. My mama used to be like, you got to live through it. Because I used to be like, why you going to teach me some shit? You got to experience it for yourself. That's yeah. she would say. Because mm-hmm. you ain't going to listen. Oh um, like, me, like, hey, but I just <laughs> feel like I just feel like all the times that I didn't listen, 
and somebody told me, I just kind of sat back in my chair and felt stupid because somebody mm. told me. Right. Like, damn. But that's the whole point. You got to learn. So, Go so, through that little moment. So it probably like, don't damn. matter. Wait, either way, mm-hmm. if, you, if they tell you, they don't tell you. Yeah, you Still got to learn this shit. Yep. either way. You hear me? Facts. Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm learning. I'm learn I'm learning to be I'm learning how to be professional, right? So and I mean that as in I'm making that a part of my who I am and not just what I do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. being able to one thing I noticed is being able to read a room is is important. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's Especially in the open mic field. Like yeah. that's literally what we do. I'm that's all we regulating do. energy in the room. And, and I noticed that when I step into rooms, I usually don't read them. Mm-hmm. But and I don't read them because I'm too busy trying to hide. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm mm-hmm. usually I'm usually in that bitch trying not to be noticed. Like yeah. let me sit down in this corner real quick and, yeah. and hide my face so nobody sees me. And uh I'm not trying to read the room on you. When you get into the corner, do you start reading the room? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, okay. Just wonder. Probably not. I ain't (laughs) gonna lie to you. Because I just, because I was sitting in my room the other day and I was thinking, you know, I was, I don't can't, I can't remember what specifically I was thinking about, but I remember having a thought. It's like, oh, you walk in the room and you don't never read that motherfucker. And that's why the fuck you be in a lot of the situations you be in. Because, because you didn't read the room. So you didn't know what was going on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then when you looked up and when you had to interact with somebody, all that shit was just mm-hmm. way too much. Feel that. And then I'm probably, me, I'm probably angry. You know what I'm saying? After, yeah. after encountering too much. You know what I'm saying? Or at least, even if I'm not angry, anger is probably the first thing that you see out of me. Because mm-hmm. most of the time, I don't even really be mad. It, it be me. Like the anger is. Like overwhelming and shit. The anger Different is stuff. the thing that protects me from the other emotions. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I got you. Okay, so yeah, yeah. That's what that is. As your friend and like knowing it about you and seeing you grow, I feel like you've gotten better though. You think so? I think so. Even if it's small to you or whatever, I think so. Right. Yep. I've been. Mm, no. You doing a good job. Bro? I'm like little baby steps. Okay. I think so. Oh <laughs> god, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> little stuff matters. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, this uh, yeah. sound make me happy. <laughs> Man, press the hug again. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs>